Yes. In fact, I did wake up this morning and choose chaos. Hi there. My name is Shinky. This is Shinky JRPGs. I love JRPGs. And I have all sorts of opinions on them. And today, I'm sharing some of my personal hot takes. What is a hot take, you ask? A hot take is an opinion that is likely to cause controversy or is unpopular. For anyone that has met me, I seem to have very controversial opinions when it comes to video games. For example, Final Fantasy X-2 and Final Fantasy XIII, they're some of my favorites in the series. But that's just a sample of the chaos I bring you today. I understand this is probably going to hit some buttons today, but this is just for fun. So don't hate on me too much, but you totally can if you want. Anyways, before we get into the video, hit that like button and let me know what opinions do you have on JRPGs that tend to differ from the popular opinion. Let me see them in the comments below. Keep in mind, while I do have these opinions, it does not mean I dislike any of the games I mention. In fact, I quite enjoy them. My opinions on them are just a little bit different from the typical JRPG fan. Anywho, it's time to pull up a chair, grab a drink, and get into five of my most controversial JRPG hot takes. Tales of Symphonia started the downfall of the Tales series. <laughs> and you thought I was going to ease you into the hot takes? Absolutely not. I wholeheartedly believe that the quality of the Tales series has dropped exponentially starting with Tales of Symphonia. Tales of Symphonia was the first time the combat system of the Tales series went from a 2D side-to-side -side combat system to a big wide-open 3D arena. While it is a 3D arena, you still only have the option to run left or right. Being able to run around freely was not introduced until Tales of the Abyss. Now, I don't dislike Tales of Symphonia. Not even close. However, I do dislike the fact that this game started a new common theme of 3D models, leaving the amazing pixel art from games like Tales of Eternia and Tales of Destiny 2 behind, and no more strictly having a single line for combat anymore either. The 3D combat systems just don't feel as refined anymore and are unoriginal. Every subsequent game feels exactly the same, and it just got worse as the series went on, with Tales of Berseria basically having Star Ocean 4's battle system copy and paste it in. Sure, we started to get costume with Tales of Symphonia, but at what cost? But at what cost? Anyways, to this date, I still think 2D battle system Tales games are better in almost every way. Except for Tales of Legendia, but we do not talk about that game. Reen is the worst protagonist in the Trails series, and as a result, he drags down Cold Steel and makes it the worst subseries. Cold Steel is the worst Trails subseries, and this is largely in part to the protagonist Reen. I lack any personality or capability to defend myself, Schwarzer. This is definitely going to rustle a Jimmy or two, perhaps a few feathers. I personally think of the Trails series, the Cold Steel arc is by far the worst subseries that Trails has to offer. Are you frustrated yet? Are you mad? Or perhaps, maybe you agree with me? If so, props to you for having exquisite game taste. But why? Why do I dislike Reen so adamantly? Well, are you ready for a hard truth? Reason number one. Reen has about as much personality depth as a cardboard box. Reen is so boring as a Trails protagonist. I get he is supposed to be more of a self-insert protagonist where you can somewhat influence his personality with decisions, but even outside of that, he just isn't very interesting. He's just very typical shonen anime hero who relies on the power of friendship, and he does this a lot. Every time he gets into a tiny bit of trouble, someone has to pop in and save him. Every single time. It got exhausting and incredibly predictable. You knew that every time Reen gets into a tiny bit of trouble, out comes some member of class 7 or one of the instructors would pop in and save him. Not to mention depressing. There was that one scene in Cold Steel 4 where it's like the second time meeting Musei's parents and he literally goes all, well, I guess I'll just unalive myself. Why? Why unalive? Because YouTube. Anyways, for reason number two, he turns the whole game into a harem simulator. This is what I dislike most about the Cold Steel arc. 
the sim dating aspects. Reen is literally the eye of almost every single character in the game. Classmates, students, which in itself is a whole other issue, and even instructors. Almost every character in the Cold Steel arc is down bad for Reen for some strange and weird reason. Which, okay, isn't unheard of. It is an anime and JRPG cliche to have characters interested in the main hero. Okay, I get that. However, what makes this even worse is that in each one of the Cold Steel games, there is a scene where you pick a character you've maxed affection with and go on a date with them. Reen and the character have this intimate night where love, be it romance or bromance, is confessed. There are sweet scenes usually, but they have no effect on the story. After this cutscene, things go back to absolute normal like nothing happened at all. It completely renders any romance system useless. Sure, there were some slight romance aspects in the Crossbell duology, but it wasn't as much of a main focus. And unlike Cold Steel, the scene that you had at the end of Trails to Zero is referenced in Trails to Azure, so at least it mattered. Reen, you are awful and you should feel bad. And for reason number three. Somewhat related to reason number two, but Cold Steel is just too horny. Since the game is borderline harem simulator, you have clearly sexual moments all over the place. It's not uncommon for JRPGs to have a hot tub or a hot spring scene. It's usually a one-off scene to make for some funnies, but not only does Cold Steel have several hot spring scenes, but each one of them are completely out of character. Normally, you have these brilliantly written characters very deep, very articulate, a very serious political fantasy setting, but the moment a hot spring scene comes along, the women of Cold Steel start groping each other like it's an 18 plus lewd anime. I get it, fan service is a thing, but my goodness, this is done so often that it gets old quickly. I would 100% be okay if these were rare occurrences, but they happen so frequently, it just started to make me cringe. Anyways, Rain and Cold Steel bad, Estelle and Sky good. Play Trails in the Sky. Thank you. World maps existed to give the feeling of non-linearity, but as a whole, most JRPGs have always been walk from point A to point B. They are no longer needed. Let me preface this with I love and enjoy 8-bit and 16-bit RPGs. They're fun. They're expansive. They give the illusion of exploration and adventure. However, the world maps are nothing but an illusion. Do you remember when Final Fantasy XIII came out and the biggest complaint was? It actually still is. It's just a hallway simulator. While I will not argue that point, Final Fantasy XIII is 100% a hallway simulator. I will argue that world maps are exactly the same, just in disguise. Let's take a look at Final Fantasy IV, for example. At the beginning of the game, you leave Castle Baron. What are your options? You are to enter the Mist Cavern to progress the plot. Sure, you have the option to enter the Chocobo Forest, but that's just a distraction with nothing to do. Oh, that's the beginning of the game? So that's a bad example? Okay, let's try another. When you leave the Waterfall Cavern after getting Tella, what are your options? Your only option is to run into Castle Damakian. Sure, you can try to explore, but you can't go anywhere until you enter the castle and get the hovercraft. World maps until late game are nothing but a well-disguised hallway and you can't convince me otherwise. I would much rather have a much more detailed hallway than a bland open world map with almost no interesting things to look at whatsoever. If world maps never return in any game ever again, I personally would not miss them. Just because you get to a point where you have to grind, it does not mean it is bad game design. It is just an aspect of the genre. This is something I will never understand. More often than not, you hear complaints about JRPGs. Oh, I got to this point and the boss absolutely destroyed me. Now I have to sit here and grind for half an hour just so that I can get strong enough to beat the boss. That's a JRPG as a whole. You sit there, you grind if you get to a point where strategy will not help you and neither will your levels. So you need to make yourself more powerful. That's just part of the genre. This makes sense both gameplay wise as well as story wise. Let's start with gameplay. Do you perhaps remember one of the greatest RPG series of all time? Dragon Quest? Perhaps you've heard of it? If not, you should totally play it. But let's not get sidetracked. Anyways, Dragon Quest. The whole game was built around grinding. 
not necessarily for experience, but for money. The general progression of the game was to go to the next town, grind for money, to buy the best possible equipment, and continue on. The game would have been incredibly shallow if you didn't have those points where you'd have to grind just so you could get stronger. You could argue that this was just an aspect of the times to extend the length of the game, but this continued for several games, even to its most recent release of Dragon Quest XI. And it isn't the only series that does this. Perhaps not for money, but this extends to needing levels to beat a boss, or grinding for ability points to learn your next ability. It's just one of those things that's intricate to the genre. Now outside of gameplay, why would you want to grind? What about story? There are several times in RPG stories where you have to fight someone much stronger than you. Usually it's a final boss that somehow achieved godhood in one way or another. You think that you should just be able to casually walk up to them without training just to beat the so-called deity into submission? No, you need to get stronger. You need to match their power. And guess what? You don't get that by casually going for a walk through the Lost Woods. You gotta put the effort in. Listen to Eye of the Tiger. Train, train, and train some more until you are at equal godhood and can beat the crap out of said boss. Anyways, that's why JRPGs have story or easy modes. And for the record, those easy difficulties are totally okay. Some people just want story. That's alright. But don't discount the fact that if you want to play it at a standard difficulty, grinding should be necessary at one point or another. And don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Final Fantasy VI is only half of a perfect game. Oh boy, I am ready to get cancelled for this one. So before I get into this, for anyone that hasn't played Final Fantasy VI, please click off the video, as I don't want to ruin this masterpiece for anyone. Shh, but click the subscribe button first. Anyway, see, I told you I liked the games I was talking about. Okay, are we good? Everyone here has played Final Fantasy VI? All the way through to the ending? Alright, it's time to party. I believe the World of Balance segment of Final Fantasy VI is absolutely amazing. It could even be considered perfect. It has great story, it has great characters, the music is absolutely sublime. I adore it to no end. It's when the world of ruin happens that this game goes from a solid perfect 10 to a eh, 7. The story aspect is great. The idea of the villain winning was a definite game changer, but I wish it happened closer to the end. The fact that once the world of ruin happens and Kefka destroys the warring triad, I'm probably getting that wrong. It happens only like halfway through the game, and that's where the plot comes to a standstill. Sure, there are a few scenes where Kefka wrecks towns with laser beams of death. That's cool and all, but instead of plot progression from that point, all you have is character development. Now don't get me wrong, I am all for character development and getting to know the characters more, but the way that Final Fantasy VI does it is they just cram all the character development into the last half of the game. And it just wasn't as fun as it could have been. If they spread out the character development through an entire story and had the world end happen shortly before the final boss, then that would be great. But no, you had to have it halfway through the game and have absolutely no plot for the next 10 to 15 hours. It just ruined the whole pacing of the game for me. What makes it worse is you can go straight to the final boss. It's nigh impossible to make it through to the final boss though, as it forces you to split your party into three separate routes. However, if you gather all the characters in the game, you're then vastly overleveled, and Kefka doesn't stand a chance. Bad pacing, and on top of that, Final Fantasy VI is horribly balanced. For a game that everyone claims is the best RPG in existence, y'all let me down. So. Do you hate me all for my opinions yet? I hope not, because I enjoy having you all around. What do you think of my hot takes? Do you agree with any of them? Do you disagree with them? Feel free to roast me in the comments below, be as critical as you want, and tell me some of your spiciest hot takes. I'm quite curious, and I will read each and every one of them. Thanks for sticking around, and if you enjoy videos like top fives, reviews, and trailer reactions, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Anyways, until the next video, thanks for tuning in, I will see you soon, and have a wonderful day.